Whenever you think of Fred Halstead from this moment on, you will come to associate him with Joey Yale. Yale's iconic performance in L.A. plays itself as a fisting bottom would begin a friendship, partnership, and tumultuous relationship with Halstead that would tie them together forever in history. On tonight's episode, we're going to celebrate Joey Yale, the BDSM twink of your dreams, who was a model and filmmaker during the early 1970s, who tamed and tried to control an artist like Fred Halstead. This is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Before we continue, I want to remind you to help this channel by clicking the subscribe button and selecting the bell icon for notifications to see more content like this. Joey Yale was born Joseph Richard Janoska in Lynch, Kentucky on December 25, 1949. His parents would eventually move to Speedway, Indiana, home of the Indianapolis 500. There, he attended high school and was a part of the theater program. Check out his classmate. Yep, that's Joey Stewart from Three's Company. Yale had an older brother who was a locally known bluegrass singer and eventually left for Los Angeles to find fame and fortune. Joey would go with him and travel a few days to get to California. When they arrived with only $100 in their pocket, they soon began working day jobs while pursuing a life in entertainment. His brother Michael would eventually record an album for Epic Records and later worked as a composer and guitarist with stars like Johnny Cash and Glenn Campbell. Yale's path was not so straightforward. He began his entertainment career in the original Disney on Parade traveling roadshow. Yale would play the role of Mowgli, the Jungle Boy, and during this time, he would ditch his birth name of Janoska for Janacek, before finally being given his name Joey Yale by Henry Wilson, the legendary former manager of Tab Hunter and Rock Hudson. Joey Yale met Fred Halstead outside of a leather bar in West Hollywood in 1969. They became romantically involved, and Fred would convince Yale to star in his first porn film, L.A. Plays Itself. Yale, who had previously performed in Leather Narcissist, filmed most of his work, but halfway through the film, he quit the project for fear of hurting the career he wanted to pursue. Fred and Yale parted ways at that point in time. Several years later, they rekindled their friendship and relationship and went on to work on more films, eventually becoming business partners with a studio called Costco. They also lived together in an apartment in West Hollywood. Their relationship was troubled and volatile with people going on record saying it was on again, off again. And while everyone assumed Fred was the big bulking top, he was very passive. When they had arguments, Yale would clobber him, and Fred would show up at a friend's house bloodied up. Sometimes their relationship was purely out of necessity. Fred admitted that he had no sense of business, and was relieved when Yale took over managing all of their affairs. Fred and Yale's company Costco distributed and in most cases produced 24 gay pornographic films between 1973 and 1985. Yale was not prolific as a performer, starring in only a handful of titles. In fact, he directed more titles than he performed in. Yale was great at the business aspect of the business, and later the storylines, scripts, set design, lighting, directing, acting, marketing, and distribution. In 1975, Fred Halstead proposed to Yale. The announcement of the imminent marriage was given to newspapers, but later the pair decided to remain partners and called marriage heteronormative. Yale tired of his domestic situation and left Fred in the early 1980s. In 1984, Fred and Yale sold the distribution rights of all of their films, including L.A. Plays Itself and Sex Garage, to His Video, a subsidiary of Video Company of America. L.A. Plays Itself was released on VHS by VCA in 1990 and did not include the final fisting scene. Anybody who wasn't living under a rock in the 1970s knew legendary porn actor John Holmes, who was known for his huge penis. For those of you in younger generations, John Holmes was the inspiration for the films Boogie Nights and Wonderland. When Holmes fell on harder times, he turned to making a couple of gay porn films. In July 1983, 
Yale performed with John Holmes in The Private Pleasures of John C. Holmes. John Holmes would later die of AIDS on March 13, 1988. While there is speculation online about whether this was the scene where John Holmes contracted HIV, it really is all speculation, as there is no way to know what the private lives of these models were off production. In 1984, Yale was ill with AIDS, something Fred was incapable of dealing with. While visiting Yale at the hospital, Yale once shouted at Fred, You did this to me. Yale's brother, Michael, was at his side the entire time and did not have a nice thing to say about Fred, whom he accused of abandoning Yale during his time of need. On April 18, 1986, Joseph Richard Yanoska, Joey Yale, died in his home in Palm Springs, California. He was cremated and his ashes were spread on a hill overlooking the town of Palm Springs, the place he loved. As with many of the subjects in these shorts, it was very hard to find detailed information on Joey Yale. I have to thank William E. Jones, whose book Halstead Plays Himself, does the best job of gathering any and all information about Fred Halstead and Joey Yale. History from this moment and before has been less kind to Joey Yale than his more infamous counterpart Fred Halstead. Aesthetically, nothing really distinguishes Yale as an auteur, but he was still there and still the backbone of a famous, difficult man. Joey Yale leaves a roster of films he appeared in that are now since iconic, and a roster of films he has directed that surely deserve a second look. Fun fact. We all know by this point what the term twink is referring to. We may disagree on whether it is an acronym or not, but did you know that Fred Halstead and Joey Yale claim to have invented the term twink and say it derives from Twinkie snacks? Their belief was that Twinkies or Twinks were white, sickingly sweet, full of cream, and had no nutritional value whatsoever. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory, as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, Discord, and if you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn where you can help support this channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers. Cheers.